it seems to me Brazil is taking uh, taking good care of the situation now uh, developing uh, between Venezuela and Guyana. Brazil is is involved in diplomatic right. uh, negotiations, and uh, um, uh, it, it, things look like uh, the things look like are going in a, in a good way. They already had a, an agreement of uh, non-aggression. Uh, none of the countries will will appeal to violence in this negotiation right, and all, right. all this kind of thing. Uh, but in the past, we had uh, we, we saw uh, the West uh, undermine uh, Brazilian efforts in diplomacy before. For in, for instance, with the uh, the Iran uh, agreement of uranium, when Brazil and Turkey negotiated with uh, uh, Iran about the 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 uranium in the United States, but yeah, yeah. just drop it away. Uh, right. Is it possible to us to see something happen here too in 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 in, th in this way? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Brazil come out with a good agreement in between the two countries, and all of a sudden the West uh, decides it, it's not valid and whatever. Well, I I think uh, let let me put this in sort of a paternalistic uh, metaphor. Um, since the end of World War II, uh, the United States has been the, the big uh, father. And all the other countries in the world have been these kids, children, that have to obey the father. And the children that got out of line would get punished. And uh, the, the children that were obedient would get rewarded. And so that's been what, you know, what the United States likes to call that rules-based international order. Well, guess what? A lot of those kids have grown up. They're now 17, 18, 19 years old. They're no longer listening to dad. They got their, they're as big as dad. Uh, they're younger than dad. They're a little bit more faster than dad. Uh, and they can make their own money. And, and, and so all of a sudden, the United States is grappling with this fact that it no longer can dominate the world like it used to. And that's one of the that's one of the important uh, things about BRICS, because it's not just Russia, it's not just India, China, it's also Brazil, and South Africa, and, and the fact that Brazil was independently set up an arrangement with China to trade in in, in you know respective currencies outside of the dollar, you know that that was that's alarming to the United States, and frankly, there's not a lot the United States can do about it. Now, the, the United States also has shot itself in the foot because instead of be, being relying upon diplomacy, we have become just a two-note, I call it the two-note Charlie strategy. Uh, note number one are sanctions. We're going to impose ex economic sanctions. In fact, if we really don't like it, we're going to take your money. We're going to seize it. We're going to freeze it. We're going to rob you. But we're going to call it legal, but it's still theft. Or we're going to invade you or attack you militarily or fund somebody else to attack you militarily. Well, those, that strategy now, has it's broken in U Ukraine. They initially thought that, boy, when, when we hit Russia with these economic sanctions, Russia's going to crumble. Nope, it didn't. And then with the emergence of BRICS as a real al viable alternative for trade, commerce, all of a sudden, the United States isn't getting to call the shots. And then when the United States sees $300 billion in Russian assets, say, okay, we got your money. You can't do anything about it. All right. So, you know, what Russia is ultimately going to do is uh, they'll get a hold of companies that owe U.S. corporations money or U.S. banks money, and they'll just seize their assets. So, okay, two can play this game. And, and so uh, within this, it's, it, you know, Brazil's charting its own course. And that independence is going to infuriate the Washington establishment, but there's not, you know, not a lot they can do about it. Uh, you know, Bra Brazil's grown up, let's put it that way. 